welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. I am one of your co-hosts, Chris Bixby, and with me today, as always, our other co-host, Matt Bingle, and our host, Jake Deffenbaugh. How are you guys? Good. Doing great. How are you, good? Chris? How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Awesome. Awesome. Who we got? Very excited for this week's interview. Uh, he is an actor, dancer, and choreographer who has worked on a number of projects with Nickelodeon, such as uh, Victorious, iCarly, Drake and Josh. He choreographed um, a lot of the dance sequences you've seen on those shows, and as well as playing Lane Alexander, the guidance counselor on Victorious. We're here to talk about that and some other stuff as well. And here he is, Mr. Lane Napper. Lane, how are you? What's up, guys? How's everybody? Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, Happy to have you on. A pleasure. Happy to be here. Y'all's energy and vibe. I'm feeling this already. So thank you. This is awesome. <laughs> All right. Awesome. 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 So to kick this off, I know I kind of introduced you already, but we know who you are. But for those who don't, would you care to like introduce yourself a bit? Yeah. Uh, my name is Lane Napper. And uh, I started out years ago uh, as a dancer, doing all that kind of stuff, an actor, dancer. And then I got hooked up with Nickelodeon and met Dan Schneider and it just became a family, like a, a you know, a marriage made in heaven with all of the cast and stuff. I started on, uh, uh, let's see, all that. Then that went to Zoe 101, Drake and Josh, iCarly, uh, Victorious, and little things in between. Uh, so that's kind of where I started. I started with all of that, but prior to that, you know, I have a life in New York. I'm in New York right now. This is, I'm in my New York apartment, um, but yeah, so, I, I was a choreographer, I still am, I still teach dance. And right now I'm with a group called Titans of Dance, which is amazing. Uh, Titans of Dance, you can look them up online and the owner of it, uh, Greg Savage, he actually put together a really good team of choreographers. Some of them choreograph for TV, some of them work on television with people like Rihanna or Taylor Swift and things like that. Wow. And, uh, Wow, awesome. It's insane. Like, you guys got to look this up. But what's really funny is every event we sell out, you know, there's thousands of dancers in these rooms. You have to, in fact, if you look at my TikTok or my Instagram at Real Lane Napper, you're going to be blown away by how much stuff is going on. But uh, after we do the dance, then we uh, do autograph signings and stuff. And uh, oh, nice. Yeah. So um, it's been a lot of fun and, you know, working at Nickelodeon and I've done some Disney stuff as well but I think I'm more known uh, for Nickelodeon stuff in fact it's really weird when I'm in New York sometimes it blows my mind because people still will every day every day someone will come up to me and say hey do you have any lotion or they call you know because my character always had lotion right yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh or they'll right. call me the goat of Nickelodeon because I did all these shows, you know. So yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and it's really funny too because a lot of people don't know. Besides choreographing these shows, I was also in them. But there was a lot of stuff behind the scenes, like I was the dialogue coach, you know, helping the actors with their lines. And I don't know if you guys remember the episode of uh, I I love chicks or something about the little. You know, they had a bunch of chicks in this episode there was like a thousand chi little baby chicks um yes this was i carly yeah i had yeah, their, i remember that i had chick chickens or something like that yeah if you I look remember. at the drawing on the board i drew all of those chicks i'm a cartoonist oh wow oh, oh wow and, uh, what, what was funny is when spencer and carly and sam went to the art class and they all had to draw a bunny rabbit i drew all of those rabbits Oh my goodness. Wow. That's cool. Wow. I remember that. Yeah. Wow. So I just, anyway, I'm rambling at this point, but yeah, I did a lot. Of <laughs> no worries. But I love, I love, love, love the business. I love acting. I love choreographing. I feel very blessed being able to do what I do. Oh, that is, that is awesome. That, that's amazing. Um, Can you talk about your background was like and how you grew up? Yes. Uh, I was born and raised in Virginia. So I'm a country boy at heart. Oh, wow. 
I'm a country boy. People don't know. They don't even know. Um, until they see me eat, then they know I'm from the country. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But anywho, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm one of six. I have four brother, four older brothers and one sister, a younger sister. So there's six of us. And growing up, uh, all of them were musically inclined. Like all of them sang and did all of this. But when I was growing up, I had asthma really bad. And one year it turned into pneumonia. So I was in the hospital all the time. I mean, all the time. I was hooked up to that little that little heart monitor, that little boop, boop thing. I think mm -hmm. it's called. Yeah. 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 I was in the hospital. I remember Christmas Eve, I was in the hospital. Uh, I just, I couldn't breathe. I would just, just basically fall down and not be able to get air. And so they kept me in a couple of times. Um, and I think that's, to be honest, that's where I fell in love with television because all I could do was just lay there and look at the screen. I could hardly even talk. It, it, it really took an act of God just to get me to say, you know, I need this or I couldn't even raise my hand. That's how bad the asthma was. So like, I fell in love with television. And I remember one time I was in the hospital and I saw a, a video of Gene Kelly. The movie was called Summer Stock. And I saw him dancing and I couldn't figure out where all those those tap sounds were coming from. Then I realized they were coming from his shoes. And that's when I thought, mm, that looks really cool. So as I got older, growing up in Virginia, I, I was working construction. But while I was doing that, I had already graduated high school. And then I went to start taking tap lessons. That was what I wanted to do. And I didn't tell anybody I was doing it. I just, at work, I would... I would go to the studio. It was called Dance, etc. A lady by the name of Ann Boyle. I'll never forget this. I knocked on her door. She opened it up. And I said, yeah, I want to learn how to dance, but I can't really afford it. But if you let me, you know, take class, I'll clean your toilets. I'll clean your mirrors. I'll take care of the studio. And right then and there, she said, you know what? Come on in. And she hired me right then and there. And wow. Oh my I, God. Did, wow. I did scrub the toilets and wipe the mirrors, you know, whenever they needed it, I would take care of it, but I got to take mm -hmm. classes and those classes let me, you know, learn to dance. And that's where I fell in love with dance. And then fast forward, I ended up moving to New York and in New York, I met an actress by the name of Brooke Shields. Now Brooke Shields. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think Hulu, I think it's Hulu's got a special coming out about her. I mean, she's got a resume. You guys should try to get her on here one day. I mean, she, she's got so many stories, but we were taking dance classes in New York at a place called uh, Broadway Dance Center. And mm -hmm. our teacher was Frank Hatchett. And he was my mentor. You know, I learned so much from him. And Brooke and I were in the classes and we just became really good friends. And she invited me to go out to, New to LA where she was working on a show. So she invited me to work on it, and I was the stand-in. Now, for those who don't know what a stand-in is, it's a person who takes all the blocking notes for the actors, and when the actors have to go away to get makeup and hair, or if they're late, I step in and do all of their lines and scenes until they come back. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that for a couple of different shows. One show would lead to another show and to another show, but Brooke Shields was a real uh, pioneer for me. She really helped you know, teach me about how to be on a set. And she was so gracious, still is, you know, she's just awesome. And so that's how I learned about television. So what I would do is if I had to be at work at seven, I would get there at 6 a.m. just to watch. I wanted to learn about the lights and all of that and um, mm -hmm. entrances, exits from the actors. And if I was off at four, I wouldn't leave until five or six. You know, I just wanted to stay and absorb it all. So one thing led to another. I came back to New York and this friend of mine, Will Bardelli, he was working on all that and they needed a, a uh, 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 dialogue coach. For those who don't know what a dialogue coach is, that person is, has the script. He helps the actors with their lines if they forget a line or if they want to rehearse before the scene, I'm there for it. So he calls me up in New York on a Friday. I'll never forget this. And he says, hey, Lane, we just lost our dialogue coach and you would be perfect for this. It's about kids. And sometimes they might need a choreographer and you're good with that. You should come in. And I said, okay, when do you need me? 
He says, I need you Monday. And that was Friday. I said, wow. okay. So I just, I packed up my stuff and I went and that's when it all changed. That's when my life changed. I will never forget being at that table read. It was a huge table, orange. It was an orange splatter, like, on, you know, the Nickelodeon splatter. Yeah. It was mm, a giant yes. table like that. So sitting around the table, I was sitting next to Dan Schneider and I was reading the script and going along with all this. And then I just got from one job to the next job, to the next job, to the next job. And then uh, Victorious happened. So I still think I'm rambling. Did I talk too much? Like y'all? No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, we're all, we're all about hearing stories. So you're, Mm -hmm. you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. You're fine. So, oh, so anyway, to finish that off, uh, Dan Snyder, when we were working on Victorious, he called me into the office and he says, Lane, I want to talk to you about a new show I'm working on. And, and at that point, for people who don't know, it, it didn't have a title. They did not mm-hmm. know what it was going to be called. So um, he called me into the office and he says, I want to talk to you about a show I'm working on. It's about a performing arts school. And, uh, you know, I want you to be the choreographer. And I said, OK. And he says, also, I want you to see something. So he hands me the script. And I look through the script and my name is in it. And it says Lane. He goes, what do you think? I said, this is cool. Like, I thought he was just going to name a character Lane. And so he goes, that's you. I said, yeah, I know. Like, that's my name. I know. And he goes, no, I want you to to be in the show. And I was like, Dan, don't play with me, man. My heart isn't that strong. You know, <laughs> don't, play, don't play with my feelings like this. And so he goes, I'm serious. I want you to choreograph and be on the show. So I'm crying and everything. You know, I'm like dying and this and that. And so that (laughs) night I ran to Apple and I got a large computer for Will Bardelli and his family because they needed one. You know, Mm -hmm. theirs was kind of busted, you know. So I went and got, I mean, they could have afforded. I want to be clear, but I went out as a token of my appreciation. it It was Will who got me the job at Nickelodeon to begin with years ago and this and that, and it led to this and this and that. So that's how I became Lane, uh, the guidance counselor over at Victorious. And so, yeah, there we are. Yeah, and you mentioned awesome. all that. All that was a really good show too, because I mean, everyone says it, but it it was basically like Nickelodeon's version of Saturday Night Live. I agree. And yeah. I, I didn't come on until like season eight, I think it was. Ah. Or season seven. I didn't start mm-hmm. at the beginning, but that was a. I learned a lot on that show because those shows you have to move. Like everything happens, there might be a splatter or a, a blow up or something, and you know you got to be on it. So that was a yeah. good training ground to be on. Yeah, and a lot of the um, cast members who were on it eventually became like big Nick stars. So it definitely launched like a lot of people's careers. I'd say on that show. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys yeah. heard. You know it's coming back. Oh yeah, it did. It oh, yeah. did. It did come yeah. back for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, oh no, yeah. no, no. I mean, no. They, it came back for a little, like a little reunion kind of thing. But it's coming back. It's it's a full blown show. Paramount got it. So um, I think if you go online and check it out, yeah, a lot of them signed back on. But they're about to go back into production. That's awesome. Awesome. Really? That yeah. is that's, awesome. That, that's amazing. That's, that's cool. an exclusive. You heard it right here, folks. <laughs> yes, we're here first. Yeah, we're here first. Yep. Yes. Yep. So you kind of touched up on it earlier, but what or who inspired you to get into dancing? Um, well, the people that I watched on television, like Gene Kelly, was a big inspiration. Uh, so was Sammy Davis Jr. And, and I do a oh, lot yeah. of um research on things, like a lot of old television. Like I'll research it. Some of these shows were before my time, but I would um, do the research and look at them. But so I would say a lot of people who came before me, I uh, really got inspired by. Uh, so that's that's what really got me into dance. But my biggest uh, mentor for that was my teacher, Frank Hatchett. He taught me how to teach. So um, just watching him. And I remember somebody telling me, if you want to learn how to teach, you watch him. And so... Uh, you know, I steal little bits and pieces from him uh, when I'm teaching. And it's really, it's it's just so funny how life comes full circle. It really is. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So what is your earliest dancing memory? 
um, I did a bunch of local things, you know, um, community things. I was in a, I was in West Side Story, a community theater. I did Pippin Community Theater. And then we would perform at malls or hospitals and things like that. But one, there was this big inauguration event down in Washington, D.C., and they had me tap dance. I had like the full Yankee Doodle dandy kind of outfit on. It was a solo. And I'll be darned if I didn't get in the middle of that stage and start dancing. And I looked down and one of my taps from my tap shoe flew off. So I'm doing this thing and I'll be darned if the left tap fell off as well. So I'm up there, but you know, the show must go on. You just keep going. Definitely, um, yeah. But yeah, it was cute. Yeah. You know, you just keep going. And then when the song was over, I grabbed my taps off the ground and ran off stage. So it was cool. <laughs> it was cool. Nice. nice. So, so now, really cool. so now being a dancer, kind of how did choreography fall into that? Like, how did you start uh, choreographing? Oh, um, that, that's good. I, I was taking class and I had ideas. I'm really big on color. I, I, you know, for those who can see the apartment, there's a lot of color in here. So I love color. So when I look through the camera lens, I see colors as opposed to movement sometimes. So mm -hmm. I would, I would, you know, figure out shapes. But here's a really weird fun fact. Something just told me to get some choreography. So what I did is I hired 12 kids, got them each. I think I gave them each $20 and the parents and myself, we went to this playground and I choreographed this dance around the, play, the slide and the swing and all of that stuff. And we did this thing and then I had the footage and I'll be darned if like two weeks later I was on the set of all that and the executive producer at the time, uh, Robin Weiner, came up to me and she says, hey, Lane, I hear you're a choreographer. And I said, yeah. She goes, we're about to choreograph something on all that, the opening. Do you think you could do it? I said, yeah. And she says, do you have any footage? And I said, yeah. So I pulled out that thing and handed it to her. I mean, it was, I'm telling you, it was supposed to happen that way, you know, because uh, I didn't have any footage prior to that. And that's when it all took off for me. They let me choreograph everything on their shows. It was crazy how much stuff I got to choreograph. And people don't even realize that it was me who did it. Um, but that's cool. I mean, I just enjoyed it so much and got to meet new people and work with people. And, you know, it was just fun. Like Vic, Victoria Justice, working with her, she yeah. really, you know, she'll jump in and do what you need. Uh, Sam, uh, or I'm sorry, Jeanette. Jeanette McCurdy, Sam. Mm, yes. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't realize I did the tap dance with her on that episode. I yes. I remember I that. Yeah. In a coat. People don't realize that was me. Um, so I got to choreograph that, and it was a lot of fun to do that. And she worked so hard. Now, here's another fun fact about that episode. The episode is called "I Was a Pageant Girl." She ends up tap dancing in that episode. Originally, she was going to ice skate. Um, oh, wow. Said, Interesting. Hey, wow. You can find the footage. If you can find the footage, it's crazy. Like she, know, I mean, not the footage from the show, but right. Jeanette can do those turns and lift her leg up and hold it. You know, she's turning. She is an amazing ice skater, but it would have cost so much for production to rent the ice skating rink for us to shoot it there. So that's why they said, we got to figure something else out. Makes sense, learned, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they learned that she could tap dance. That's how we ended up doing that. So that was a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah, really, really good episode. I, Carly, well, and Victoria's too. They all have like, some really good episodes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good episodes. So before getting to appear on screen as an actor, you worked as a dialogue coach for Nickelodeon. Can you talk about that and what that experience was like? Um, dialogue coaching is you have the script, like I mentioned earlier, you have the script and you help the actors with their lines if they need it, or I'm behind the camera. And if they forget a line, I will give it to them. And uh, sometimes, believe it or not, I would laugh during the spots where there should be laughter just so they could get the pacing down. So oh, okay. If, if there was a hmm, joke, interesting. I would go, <laughs> and then they would know to hold that pose or hold that pause mm -hmm. until, you know. So, um, but yeah, it was fun. Uh, when we did Drake and Josh, that was live. Like, 
that was a fun show to do. And those guys oh, yes. were just like that in real life. I mean, it was so crazy, so crazy. Um, yeah. But yeah, doing the dialogue coaching stuff was fun. I'll be honest, the hardest one to do was Zoe 101. I mean, trying to round that crew up to sit down and work with them was insane. They were, they were just all over the place. You know, I, it was hard to, to get each one. I would go in and say, hey, does anybody need help? And they would say, yeah, let's go over the lines. And then we would start working on it. And then the other cast members would come in and they would all start talking and move to the other side of the room. And I would just leave. I was like, okay, you know. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just tough. That one was a little tough, but everything else, um, all those other shows were pretty cool to, to work on. Everybody was really, yeah, it, it, and it really becomes like a family. You know, it sounds cliche, yeah. but it really does become like a family because you're, you're with mm. these people, eight, nine, 10 hours, 12 hours a day, Monday through Fridays. And, you know, you get to know each other, which is kind of cool. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, you yeah. think you, you definitely, you form like a second family with them. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, sure. and yeah. Yeah, and on the subject of uh, bringing things back, Zoe 101 is getting a revival movie for Paramount Plus, which is exciting. Yeah, crazy. That's exciting. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to happen with us. I, I seriously do. The fans, I'm shocked at how loyal the fans are. I mean, it's so amazing how loyal those victorious fans are. I mean, like I said, every day in New York, every day, I will have at least three people stop me or or make mention of of I cry, uh, victorious. It blows my mind. How oh my god! Are. Well, we're on Netflix too, so I think that that really mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of that's crazy. But uh, oh, and speaking of victorious, you know, um, I mentioned earlier that I'm with Titans of Dance, that dance thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, every now and then at select cities, I'll take a piece of victorious choreography and teach it. They lose their minds. <laughs> they lose their minds. In fact, um, you know, when you guys have a chance, I want you to go to my um my my TikTok. Mm -hmm. I do I do it on there, and they they just they went crazy. And um, sometimes I'll do choreography on that. One of those hit four million views. Wow! Oh, wow! My oh my god! That's that's insane. And the other one I think is at two million because I was teaching some choreography. This is all on my TikTok. TikTok, mm -hmm. um, they, they, the fans are crazy over this stuff, which I love. I mean, I'm blessed and I'm humbled by it. I just, and I love to meet them. Like anybody who wants to come up and chat, I'll chat with them. Anybody who wants to do a pick, I will do a pick. I mean, if it takes all day, I'm there for it. It's just, oh. they're so loyal. So, yeah. Huh. Oh, that's Going awesome. On. Yeah, That's awesome. So, what was it like working on working for Nickelodeon for the very first time and meeting all the cast and crew? On 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 the first one I worked on was all that. Mm -hmm. So it was a little weird in the sense that um, when I first got there, something had happened. I'm still not sure what happened before I got there, but the the cast members and stuff everybody was just really sad i think there was a death or something something went down to this day i still don't know because it was my first day and i didn't want to say hey what's going on you i didn't know right anybody. yeah right I didn't know anybody so all i could do was just kind of sit in the corner and you know just just kind of wait and see and then slowly they started to embrace me mm -hmm. um uh yeah the, one of the character or one of the people's name was jack and the other one was um was uh, Lisa, Lisa Foyles. Both mm, of them, yes. they were my heart. I mean, everybody on the show was cool, but those two, uh, I really got really close with them in the sense that, you know, we would just laugh. It was just a, honestly, you can't go to that job and not laugh and have fun. It just, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's serious because you got scripts, you got a live audience, everything mm -hmm. has to move. Um, but yeah, it, it was just a fun, fun time. And I thank God being able to go to work. And I was like, wow, I can't believe they're really paying me for this. This is crazy, you know? So, um, but yeah, but prior to that job, I had done some television, you know, I, I, you know, as an actor, I had done little pieces here and there throughout, you know, again, you'll see a lot of that stuff on my TikTok or my Instagram, you'll see these things, but um. Yeah, but the big ones were the Nickelodeon one. Like, th that's where I really fell in love. 
with television and you know getting it done fast that of kind course of stuff. right yeah mm -hmm. so so now we've talked about this earlier but um you know choreographing many of the dance sequences on all those shows for nickelodeon did you have like any favorite uh dance sequences to choreograph yeah if you look on my TikTok, I'll show you. I mean, I know I keep going back to that, but I, <laughs> yeah. hmm. I pull the clips and I list them. Yes. Um, I would say the number one, well, I'll say the second one. The second one. Ah, okay. They're both tied. They're, these have to be tied. I'm, there's no other way about it. The tap dance episode with uh, Jeanette. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that because I got to dance with her and she's just such a professional. So working with her was just everything to me. It was just everything. And then the pilot episode of Victorious. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's a real fun fact that nobody knows. This is a fun Ooh. fact. Um, the very first episode, the pilot, you mm -hmm. know what was supposed to happen was on the stage, yeah. Andre, you know, Leon, uh, his character, Andre, he was supposed to be sitting in a rocking chair and he was selling junk. And Vic comes into his, it was like a um, it's like a yard sale kind of junkyard. And mm -hmm. she was like, hi. And he goes, anything you want, you can have, you know, that you know, good price. And so there was a piano there. And so he starts playing the piano. And these two guys who are kind of looking at the different things, they all break out into this dance. The the um make it shine dance, you know? Right. And we filmed it. We did all of that. We filmed it. And then the wow. network saw it. Network was like, no, we can't. We can't use this. So a week or two later, they called me up and they said, Lane, we need a big production, like an MTV style production. So I got to hire 16 dancers and it was wow. fun. Like it was so much fun to wow. do that. So remember, it went from four people on stage. Andre, Vic, and two guys, they did the like hip hop behind her mm -hmm. to a 16 mm -hmm. big production with the lights and the fire and the smoke and the technotronics, all of that stuff. Um, now between us and the fans, I have that footage of the Wow. I oh have, my gosh. I kid you not, I swear to you. Uh, you know what? There's a, I'm so tempted to post it at one point. I just don't know when, but right. I really, I think the fans would go crazy seeing it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. Gosh. Absolutely. Yes. They would. But I tell you what, yes. I have y'all's email. I have your email. If I ever decide to post it, I'm going to let you guys know first. You'll get the exclusive. <laughs> and then um, I'm going to post it somewhere. But you guys will be the first to see it before I post it. Oh, my oh, gosh. Thank you so that, much, that's bro. awesome. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you very much. Yes. That's, awesome. that's awesome. awesome. That'd be amazing. I don't know when or where, you know, but... It's going to happen because the people are, you know, and nobody knows it exists. I mean, this is crazy. Right. Yes. Ah, hey. Yeah. So it's like, it's like you have a, a, a I mean, this, moment. I mean, this is literally the first that anyone's hearing about it, too. Yes. Yeah. 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 There, yeah. So there's a whole scene about that. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. so getting into acting, who or what inspired you to get into that? Just again, being in the hospital with the asthma. I was watching TV and I saw all of these things and I thought this was so cool and I thought I would love to learn how to do that. So I started taking classes, but my biggest inspirations uh, came from, like I said, Gene Kelly, uh, Lucille Ball, um, Flip Wilson. You know, these are comedians and actors and actresses and the Carol Burnett show. Like these are, these are some pretty older shows. But then, as I said, I got into television because of these shows. And then I just started surrounding my life with these characters. So it was just, it was just such a great time. And, you know, I still act, I still audition a lot. Uh, for those who don't know, I just did an episode of FBI, that show on CBS. Oh, nice. Detective Camps. And uh, it was weird, not weird in a bad way, but that was probably the, the nervous, the most nervous I've ever been on a set before because mm -hmm. it was serious. And I hate playing uh, detectives or um, hospital people or police because the dialogue, I'm not used to that type of dialogue. I don't say those right. words. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But you do it, you know, and uh, 
yeah, so I did that and it was fun. It was fun, but I love comedy. I love sitcoms, but I can do the drama stuff. You know, I love that. So, you know, being in television and film, I love it. I'm not where I want to be yet. So I just want to keep doing it, man. I just. Nice. Really nice. So, so now since we kind of talked about how uh, you landed the role as Lane on Victorious overall, what was that experience like both getting to choreograph and appear on screen in it that was, show? It was weird. You know, now this is a true thing. Since those episodes aired, I haven't seen them. I just won't watch. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't want to see my work. It's so weird how actors are. I've done it. I filmed it. It's done. Um, sometimes I'll be in a plane and the person next to me is watching the episode. It's so weird how, that it's out there, but I just, I don't watch it myself and the fans will yeah, come up. I can, I can yeah. Say. Yeah. So right. the fans will yeah. come up and, and, and um, recite some of the lines. I remember a lot of the lines. I just don't see the episodes, but doing the choreography and doing the, um, the acting, I had to wear two hats. So it was fine. It's just that sometimes, you know, a lot of those actors weren't dancers. At best, they were movers. So my mm -hmm. job was to try to get things moving around them, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And there was an episode, I'll never forget this one. This is another fun fact that y'all won't know. Um, that thing about, do y'all remember that? I don't remember the episode. I, wait. I was a zombie or something where she had that mask on her face. Yes. Victorious. That glue, the, the glue got stuck to her face. The mask. Yes. And then they, yes. And they had, and then uh, Trina and Kat had to get the stuff to like get the mask off. Yes. 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 I remember that very yes. well. Yes. Okay. That episode, I had choreographed this huge dance number for that episode. I, yes. Very good song. Yeah. During rehearsal, <laughs> we did, you know, before we shoot, we go in front of the uh, producer and director and everybody so they can see it. After, I kid you not, I got home that night thinking, you know, I get a phone call and it was from the executive producer and they said, hey, Lane. I said, what? They go, we can't use that. I said, what? She goes, it, it's no offense, but it's horrible. We can't use this. And I said, but the, 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 the actors, they're not dancing. I mean, I'm trying, but you can't. You can't make them dance, you know, if, if it's not in their body. So the next day at work, Dan Snyder pulled me aside and he goes, look, what's the problem? And I said, well, I can't get them to move. And he says, well, is it that they won't move or that they just can't do the movement you need? And I said, well, it's, it's that. And so we got to hire some stand-ins for that one. So we had some stand-in dancers. So mm -hmm. every now and then they kind of intercede with one another you you would never know which one was the real one and which one wasn't but i have to say victoria she jumps in man she will give you 120 percent. i love working with her for dance or acting and stuff you know i just she's just awesome i would love to choreograph for her or even ariana i mean i know they got their choreographers yeah. or whatever they're working on but i would love to go back and work uh, with some of them behind the scenes. Oh, you know? yeah. That would be so, awesome. That would be yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. I think the fans would love to see that too. Like, <laughs> if Oh, Vic yes. Did, you're not kidding. You're not kidding on that. <laughs> if, if Vic did a video, just say, and I got to choreograph it, I mean, that would create so much buzz. And then even if I made a little cameo in there or something, I think the, the audience would lose their minds, you know? Yeah. Because they love seeing the actors back together again. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, there was a video I remember seeing where it was in one of Ariana's shows where Liz Gillies went on stage and they, I can't remember the name of the song, but they sang their song from the Freak the Freak Out episode. Yeah, is that what, oh yeah, okay, I actually remembered that episode actually. Yep. It yeah. was crazy. The freak the Freak And the audience yeah. react, the audience, rea the audience reaction to seeing the two of them together on stage again was just priceless. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, people go crazy over that. And I, and I do too. When I'm, when I'm watching TV shows, certain certain shows and you see the you know your favorites together it's really cool like when i watch friends anytime they oh, yes. they do a they post a pic of each other you know together i love seeing stuff like that oh yeah yes yes really definitely great. so do you have any favorite episodes and songs from victorious um i love like make it shine for because of this well let me just tell you this every single song 
from the Victoria show, I loved it. I mean, there, every song, there wasn't one that I didn't care for. Yeah, I just, I, I seriously love them all. Those were all good. I do love the theme song to Drake and Josh that Drake Bell. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes. yes. That one, that one is the bop, man. I love that one. That's mm -hmm. a bop. So mm -hmm. that one, um, yeah. So all of them. I mean, honestly, I can't, I can't say enough about the music. Uh, so I don't have a favorite, but I think if I had to choose, it would be Make It Shine because I got to do the choreography for that one. Oh, and and the yeah. the, the theme song to um, iCarly. I love that. Yes, one. yes, yeah, it's amazing. Bob, so it's iconic. Bob. Yeah, it's crazy that. Um, and they when... use the same one for the reboot too. Yeah, that's all the same theme side. song. Yeah, yeah. nice. That's mm -hmm. how you do it. That's how you do it. Pretty awesome. awesome. Yeah. So yeah, just you know, Dan Dan Schneider, you know, Snyder's Bakery. That whole thing was a family. The one thing I loved about yeah. him is you would go from one show to the next. You know, um, mm -hmm. like right. Oh yeah. We started on all that, then Drake and Josh, then i carly and zoe 101 at the around the same time and then it just you would go from show to show to show it was um mm -hmm. it was crazy in a good way so right i got a lot of work and it was fun to be with everybody yeah do yeah. you have a do you have any favorite episodes from i guess we'll say victorious um probably the one where it says who did it to trina where she falls off that wire and no one knows who did it. Yes. yes. I remember that. Yep. Yeah. So many memorable ones. It was a detective episode. Like I had to figure, we were trying to figure it out. We were all in my office trying to figure out. So that was one that one of my favorites. And then the other favorite that the fans seem to like is when Festus gets pulled out of his grub truck and <gasps> Robbie and Trina come to my office and, um, they start yelling at me and this and that, and I take that bottle of lotion and I squirt them. Yeah. The, lotion <laughs> the fans seem to like that one a lot. That was fun. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the one, uh, the, my third probably favorite is when that that uh, video that that video TV show, whatever it was called, they came to the school, and at the very end, I throw them out. I have a golf club in my hand. And I say, you guys was it me. was it Robarazzi? That's it. Look at you knowing. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Double points for you, man. Robarazzi. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, but again, there are so many memorable ones. Yeah. Oh so my gosh. Memorable. Yeah. So many memorable ones. Yeah. So it was, yeah. it was fun. It was just a lot of fun to do and just to be a part of, you know. So um, yeah. I don't know what else to say except that. I have great memories on all those shows. It was just so much fun. And I feel blessed and honored to be a part of it. Definitely. Mm -hmm. awesome. And I think if you, well, this is a podcast, so they can't see, but you can see over here, uh, the Victorious, they all signed it, you know. Oh, wow. Uh, that is that amazing. Is awesome. that, and I got Drake and Josh. Uh, autograph. Yeah, yeah, not, not Carly. Yeah. Yeah. Really. yeah. And, you know, just had, and that stuff is all around my apartment. Like I have so many uh, knickknacks and things. And you know, in fact, another fun fact: if you go on my TikTok or Instagram, uh, you know the episode I was I was a teenage I was a pageant girl where we tap dance. Mm -hmm. There's some suitcases that Sam and I Sam tap dances up the suitcases. Mm -hmm, yes, I have those suitcases at the oh, end wow. of. At the end of the episode, the uh, the executive producer, well, Dan Schneider says, I, I said to him, I said, man, I would love the these stairs. He goes, you want these? I said, yeah. He told the crew right there, send these to Lane's house. So they packed them up and we took them to New York. I, I had them flown to New York. So they're in my New York apartment right now. Oh, that, that is that awesome. Is, that's that is cool. cool. That is wonderful. That is really cool, yes. We're, I'm curious, where are you all located? So I am I'm in Massachusetts, very cold and snowy Massachusetts. <laughs> and both me and Matt live in Maryland. About an hour and a half from each other. Yeah. Wait, Maryland? Like Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Virginia, state. Close to Virginia and all of that. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah. Dude, I didn't realize y'all were so close. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> my, yeah. aunt, my aunt lives in Maryland, but I don't know where. And so 
I was just down that way. If I had known, that's crazy. Um, in <laughs> fact, if you guys ever, all three of you, if you ever come to New York, y'all are coming here. And I'm gonna <laughs> okay. Ar- we'll do it. Okay. Uh, I'll do it. Of gonna course. See, you're going to see the archives in this place. <laughs> yeah. Know, there's so many. The footage. And like I said, when you, go, when you go on to my TikTok, scroll down, you're going to see all of this like it's crazy how many um uh things that i have in this apartment from these shows and stuff it's really i think you guys would love it i think your fans would love it so oh for sure yeah yeah you have to bring a camera and shoot and uh yeah find a way to put it on your podcast or something i don't know we'll figure it out if you're ever down this way again let us know oh for sure absolutely or if you ever come to massachusetts yeah well and if you also if you go online, like I said, we only have two cities left. My next city this weekend is Omaha, Nebraska. And then the mm-hmm. last weekend is Akron, Akron, Ohio, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, those are my last two cities on this tour that I'm doing with the uh, Titans of Dance. And so, um, yeah, we're doing that. And so if next season, if y'all see that list and I'm near you, let me know. I'll have you come to the event. You'll lose your mind. Uh, oh. yeah, and it's just yeah it's crazy uh, it is, it it's is. Crazy. that'd be wonderful it's yeah crazy. definitely yeah yes. definitely so are you still in contact with any of victoria's or nickelodeon co-stars they're all in la i'm in new york um y'all know robbie i'm sorry not uh, not robbie uh uh sinjin sinjin My oh yes yes yeah. mm-hmm. believe it or not here's a fun fact people don't know his mom is my manager. So she's oh, wow. wow. Yeah, That's she is. Awesome. She's the one who told me about you guys. And when I heard, I was like, yeah, let's do it. So uh-huh. uh, she, I, I was one day, I was in New York. This was, you know, years ago, two, three years ago, something like that. And as big as New York is, we kind of passed each other. And I couldn't even, like, when I saw him, I said, Sinjin, and for, forgetting his real name is Mikey. And I was like, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we caught up real quick. And then when Vic, Victoria was doing a, a show down in Richmond, Virginia, uh, wow, at Bush Gardens a few years ago, mm-hmm. he was doing a concert and I went and I got to, you know, see her and stuff. So, I mean, if I'm in the area and we're around, but online, like uh, Freddie, uh, Nathan Cress. Oh, uh, yeah. Us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm online. Um, yeah. You know, every now and then I'll text certain people. It just really depends on what's going on. But we don't, or at least with me, I'm not in touch with them like every day or every other day. But I, right. I, I really believe if we get a reboot or we do a special or something, it'll be just like putting on an old pair of shoes and we'll all slip right back into it. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't think it's gonna happen. I really, I just have high hopes because everything's coming back. You know, they keep bringing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And the fans want to awesome. see it. So. Yeah, I the, actually mm-hmm. had an idea for it, man. I kid you not. Ooh. I'm hoping if a producer or an, somebody with the backing hears this thing, here is my idea for this. Okay, it starts out on uh, you know a, a wide shot of uh, of Hollywood arts. We zoom in, there's a meeting going on and the person in charge is saying, I'm sorry, but we don't have enough funds. We are going to have to close Hollywood arts. And then somebody in the background says, well, maybe we can put on a benefit or a show and make enough money to save the school. And then they'll say, well, who could we get? And then the crowd and I'm, and I pop out and I say, um, I think I can get the people to come back and do a show here. And so I get everybody to come back. I get Vic, Ariana, Liz, you know, I get them all to come back to do this benefit show. But Ariana is about to go on stage and there's a development company that does not want this to happen. They want to tear this school down so they can put up high rises and they're like crooked. And so they kidnap her and we have to rescue her before the show. So I get on a motorcycle with um, with um, Cyclewitz, you know, and we got to go uh-huh. to find her. And in the meantime, they're still doing the show and this and that. And so we find her, we rescue her, and she gets on stage, and then all three of the girls do this big number, dance, all this, and uh, we get enough money to save the school. 
Oh, that's awesome. That, that, that's 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 great. That would be and wow. that would be the segue for um, like a reboot where now Lane, instead of being the guidance counselor, maybe he's the principal, or he could still be the guidance counselor there. Uh-huh. And yeah. every now and then some of the students pop back in. There's a little guest appearance or something, but then they bring in a whole new crop of um uh students for the school. Yeah. So, you know, but but the other the other ones would appear or still be a part of the show. Like maybe Robbie, maybe he works there now. Maybe he's a teacher. Him and him and Rex could be a Yes. <laughs> oh, that would be hysterical. That would be amazing. That would be great. So That'd be hysterical. Let's put it out into the universe, y'all. Let's get this thing popping. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yeah. actually, actually, I think what would be funny is if you're like riding on a motorcycle with Psycho Woods, I think what would be funny is at, like at the same time, like he's trying to like, he's trying to like drive the motorcycle and at the same time, he's trying to balance that and drinking out of his coconut like he does in the show. That would be amazing. <laughs> And then we hit yes. a bump and we hear him go, you spilt my milk or something, you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That would be perfect. Something like That'd that. That would be great. That would be perfect. Yeah. Well, Nick- Nickelodeon, if you're listening. Yes, if you're listening. Make it happen. Or, or yes. Paramount or Disney, whoever's got the money, let's get this thing yeah. done. Yes. <laughs> we, Definitely. We, we have an yes. idea for you. So in addition to working as an actor and choreographer, as we had touched up on earlier, you also teach acting yeah. and choreography. Mm-hmm. What's that like? I do workshops like uh, choreography. I'll do workshops, like I said, with Titans of Dance. I do a lot with them. And then also uh, with the acting, I do a lot of performing art schools or wherever I'm needed. Uh, I'll go out and do these workshops and different things wherever I get, you know, we get a contract and they say, hey, can we get Lane to come out and work with us? That sort of thing. And I also do private lessons with up and coming actors who are, who are learning. Mm -hmm. I work with them, you know, privately and, you know, that's a lot of fun too. So again, I just love, love, love this business. But now um, I want to give you guys an exclusive on something I'm working on. This is uh, Mm -hmm. for those who don't know, I do a lot of improv improvisation for those who don't know it's where you get up on stage and you make things up based on a suggestion from the audience and stuff. So oh. I'm with a group and it's a brand new group. I, I can't give you the name yet, but it's a brand new group. Two of the people in this group are teachers. So there's five of us. And my hope or my, 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 my drive is that I want to do stages throughout the United States. I want to do Netflix specials. Like I really want to get this improv group out there you know, go to different mm-hmm. cities. Even the Victorious fans could come and see it and that kind of thing. It's a lot of fun. It's family friendly, all of that, you know, and it would just be a lot of fun. And the five people in it are absolutely amazing. They're some of the best improvisers in New York, but super excited. But here's the weird, weird thing. There's a gentleman by the name of Corey Flowers. Now I was working with Corey's daughter, um, Ayla, and Ayla's ballet, she's really good. She's smart. She's an actress, singer, dancer, you know, triple threat. I was working with his daughter. And one day she went to go to a concert and Corey came to see me do some improvise, uh, some, some improv- improvisation show. So I did the show. And then afterwards, a few days later, I was in Virginia. He and I had uh, lunch. We were talking about all of this. And I told him what I wanted to do with this new group. Two days later, Corey calls me up and he goes, hey, Lane. I was talking to my wife and we want to back you. I said, what? He goes, we want to um, produce. We want to produce your group and have you guys do this, you know, go on the road and produce shows and do all of this stuff. We want to give you the financial backing for this. I was like, are you kidding me? And just like I did with Dan Schneider, I said, look, man, I got a weak heart. Don't play with me like this. So he says, no, I'm serious. So they formed ACF productions and so they're going to be the ones who are going to be backing this so i'm super duper excited to be working with him on this project and the people i'm working with on this um on this new show this um, uh this improv show it's an improv team and we're gonna take it by storm and when i'm allowed to review when i'm allowed to reveal 
the name and all of that, I will, you guys will get the exclusive. I'll, I'll text you or email you and say, hey, I'm ready to talk about it or whatever. But nice. Super awesome. excited. Really nice. Yeah. So you mentioned a bit earlier, you also did um, some work for uh, Disney. Can you talk a, kind of about like what you did for uh, Disney? Well, if they were doing certain workshops, like I was, I was heavily working with Lion King, you know, Lion King on Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, when they were casting that, I was one of the readers that they would use and as the actors would come in, the actors and actresses would come in. Okay. I, I might play Mufasa or I might play um, Scar and mm -hmm. they would be Nala or Simba because of the kids, you know, the, the size. And so I was doing a lot of that. And uh, believe it or not, when I was working on all that, I had gotten a call that they needed a choreographer for That's So Raven. Oh, love that show. I loved it too, but I didn't get to do it because I had already contracted to do the opening of all that, some choreography. And I couldn't, uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't not do that. But I, I, I still regret not being able to do that because I love Raven Simone. I think she's brilliant. I would love yes. to do a project with her. Yes. And that show, just oh, yeah. 20, that show just turned 20 yesterday. Yeah, yeah. This is Wait, crazy. that's how Raven did? Yeah. 20? Yep. Wow. What the heck? 20? <laughs> how is that even possible? I know. I, I actually did. I actually didn't know that until you brought up Chris. So. 20. Yeah. Wow, Chris. Is... Um, but yeah, I would love to do an episode with her where I play her uncle or something like that, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. I just think that uh, she's brilliant. So, uh, yeah, but one day, you never know. You never know. So, like I said, I love this business. It's all great. Yes. 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 So, so do you have any specific funny or interesting behind the scenes stories from your acting or choreographing work you can share? All right, I'll share I'll share this one with you. All right, now you know Spencer. Right? Yeah. Oh yes, um, Jerry Trader. He is crazy and i mean crazy with a k crazy. <laughs> there was an episode i don't even remember the name of the episode but they he gets a spaceship some kind of spaceship delivered and it's right in his living room do y'all remember this i think i think my think so there's a spaceship or some kind of spacecraft in the middle of his living room he had ordered y'all does this sound familiar at all but well maybe anyway. maybe all right so we were rehearsing and so what had happened what had happened was these two big um not construction workers but movers they come in and they take his couch and they're taking his couch out of the apartment he's like hey you guys come back with that that couch belongs to me and you know the door <laughs> shut the so nobody was on set that day you know the kids were all gone and so mm. I don't know why I, I dared him. I said, hey, 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 Jerry, come here. I said, I will give you $10 if when they pick up that furniture and start moving out of the house, you start cursing at them and yell at them and, you know, just go in. Like, how dare you take this? And so he looks at me. He goes, $10. I said, yes. So I thought he, I, who knew? So we're filming. They go, action. The two guys knock on the door. He opens it up. And they go, here, we're here to take the furniture. And he picks it up. And as they're leaving, he's going, hey, where are you going with my furniture? You beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I am dying. <laughs> screaming uh. in my face. I couldn't believe he did it. And oh, that's <laughs> amazing. Could have heard oh, that's... Could have heard Pendra. Now, Dan, who's, you know, at the monitor on the other end of the stage, <laughs> you hear on the speaker, uh, Jerry, could you come see me for a minute, please? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. I oh, went no. back with him, and, 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 uh, and then, uh, Dan had a script in his hand, and he was like, uh, yeah, uh, I don't see that anywhere on here. <laughs> I, I apologize i said dan that was my fault i dared him i didn't think he was going to go through with it but um 
Yeah, he did. And so that's hysterical. Oh my god. I, oh I gave him that ten dollars. And he took it. He took he it. Took it. <laughs> I was surprised that he took I thought maybe he would say, No, don't worry about it, man. No, he took that ten dollars. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think I actually do remember that episode now because I think the subplot for that was also had something to do with Neville. Yes, yes. Yes. In there somewhere. Yeah. Cool. It's been a long here's, time. Here's another, uh, well, two quick fun facts because I know you guys have to go. I don't, you know, I want it to be too winded. But oh, there was an okay. episode of iCarly no, called no I, Pop, I, I Fix a Pop Star. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that girl was kind of out of it, you know, and so, you know, I, I got the choreograph. But I'm sorry, let me back up. That week, the week before, my mom had passed away. Oh. And I was back in Virginia. Oh. And I was so upset, like, you know, but then I get a phone call from Robin Weiner again. And she says, hey, Lane, look, we know what you're going through. We, we just want to let you know that Next week, we're doing a dance episode. Now, if you're not ready to come back, we know, but we just wanted to, you know, offer it to you first. And I said, no, 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 I'll take it. Because it's what I needed to get away from the depression and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that episode means so much to me. I I fix a pop star because the week before, my mom had passed away. And that week, I got the choreograph. And so it really took me out of the depression part. So that one holds oh. special memory. So you asked me about a behind the scene. So that was a behind the scene uh, that I will never forget, which was really, which was really cool. Oh. And I had one more, and it just popped out of my head. I, I was just so excited about that. But um, <laughs> oh dang, this one you this didn't didn't have anything to do with dance. But here's the behind the scenes that nobody knows. Um, okay. <laughs> Do you guys remember the episode where it was raining really bad and they all got stuck in the house together? Yes. yes. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah, Very memorable mm-hmm. episode. Josh was not, that was the only episode Josh wasn't in. He was sick, like really sick that week. So the following week, they filmed the scene where he's on the phone and they inserted it in that episode. But he was not in that episode. Huh. Yeah, hmm. you wouldn't know, but his right. character left. His character went somewhere, and so hmm. they put him on the phone. But he was really, really sick that week, like seriously sick. Um, hmm. But but here's the fun fact: during that episode, it, Jerry Trainer was playing Crazy Steve. He wasn't Spencer yet. He was right. Crazy Steve. So during the episode where he's looking at the TV and he's like, Dora. You call yourself an explorer? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay. That oh episode, everybody was laughing so hard. And I'll never forget this. I pulled Jerry aside and I said, Jerry, your life just changed. He says, what do you mean? I said, I can't explain it, but this episode is going to put you on the map. And sure enough, sure enough. a couple weeks later, Dan asked him to be the brother on iCarly. Wow. Oh my oh. gosh. I have a, I seriously have an intuition about stuff like that. And if you ask Vic, Victoria, when she was on I on uh, Zoe 101, she she's dressed like goth and she has that egg and she cracks the egg and she drinks. Do y'all remember that on Zoe 101? I think so, yeah. yeah. She's dressed like a goth and she's drinking that egg that's in the in the cup. Um, her mom was standing next to me when we were watching the scene. Mm-hmm. And I looked at her mom and I said, you know, I bet you anything before this whole thing is over, this girl's going to get her own show. I just knew it. She was so good. And the mom says, you think so? I said, I'm never wrong about this. And we still talk about that to this day, that she oh, wow. she ended up being on that show. You know, That's so awesome. Yeah. Her on that show. yeah. So it's mm. just so funny how it all comes around. It's just yeah. it's so weird. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So yes. yep. so I see some of the memorabilia you have in the, uh, your background. Uh, can you, like, I guess, uh, show some of it or talk about some of it? or Very, very quickly. Yeah, this, um, this icon. Uh, uh, oh, snap. Hold on. Um, 
I have a malfunction here. Give me a, just had to unplug it. Okay, so I don't know how much you guys can see, but that was Yeah. Uh, Miranda. Uh, that's Miranda. Mar when she Miranda, was, yep. Uh, Drake and Josh. And then Drake and Josh, that's during fine. this, I don't know, if there's a glare, but if you look, there's a little DVD. And Drake actually had a DVD come out when the show was on. So I had him sign it. And I thought, oh, I, wow. Sign wow. So I have that. And then when iCarly was on, uh, Miranda, oops, Miranda did a DVD, a, D, a CD also. And I had her sign it. That's right. Yes. All signed. Does. Jerry, Jerry Trainer uh, up mm. in this thing, he says, Lane, you are forever my fortune teller. Because <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so that, that that's like a fun a fun little thing. And uh, Jeanette, I call her Jungle Beast, or I did you know, because <laughs> well, she was on set. Jungle Beast. Yeah, this girl, I kid you not, y'all don't even know. She was always like moving around, like ready. She was just like she's just awesome. And so I would say, man, you are a beast. You're a, you're a Jungle Beast, you know. And, and <laughs> If, if we saw each other in the store or something, I would go, Beast! And she would turn around yeah. and go, Beast there! <laughs> so yeah, it was that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, there's so much more. But let me quickly move to this side of the room. Everything is uh, kind of messed up right now. But one day I'm going to take y'all on a for real tour. <laughs> we're, going, we're going on an adventure okay. here. Sure. Yeah. So I, bet, um, that's I don't know if you can see. Those are the stairs I was talking about. Those the wooden. Oh yes. Oh, oh wow. wow. In, in the episode, the picture has been the background. Oh yes. Oh, oh, yes. My, oh, oh my. Oh my god. Yes. Wow. Now what's funny is the, these are made of wood. The, and people think it's like real luggage, but it's not. It's made of wood, and so I use it as a like I sit on it. People people come. Sometimes they want to take a picture on it. You know, they want to sit down and take a picture on it and stuff like that. So there's, like I said, there's a lot of memorabilia stuff in here. Um, I got jackets and shirts and stuff that I can't wait wow. to show you guys. And all that. oh, in fact, I posted something today on my, on my uh, TikTok. I just got three shirts delivered. One is iCarly, one is Victorious, and one is Drake and Josh. Oh, wow. wow. I, just, I literally crazy. just had them delivered. And if you check my, I, I posted it today on my TikTok. Um, you'll see me hold up the shirts and I asked the fans to tell me which one they like the best. And I haven't checked it. Um, but yeah. Oh, and then here's one more. And, uh, here's one more memorabilia thing. This lunchbox, I got this lunchbox at uh, target. Oh, okay. So I took it to the set and I had them sign it. So this is a one of a kind thing. Miranda signed her name. Uh, Jungle Bee signed, or I'm sorry, Jeanette signed her her name right there. Um, Freddie, that's a scripture. That he, Freddie always writes down like Bible scriptures. He's very religious, him and his family. Mm -hmm. And then Jerry Trainer wrote, keep laughing, and he signed it. Aww. Oh, so that's he, great. This is a one-of-a-kind um, item. It's You can't duplicate it because it was all fresh. And so I keep that right next to Scooby-Doo. And he watches over it during the day. <laughs> but yeah, so those are some of the things that are here. But one day, like I said, when because y'all, I didn't realize y'all were this close. But one day, y'all have to come over, and we will. Um, I'll do it. You know, I'll show y'all the tour, like the real deal. Oh yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. Absolutely. Yes. Besides, of course, still uh, acting and. You know, choreographing. Can you share any projects you're working on now? Yes. Um, like I said, the the improv group that I'm working with, we're about to, you know, start doing that. That's one thing I'm working on. I'm really looking forward to working with Corey and ACF Productions and the new group I'm working with. I'm really excited about that. And uh, what else? Still auditioning. Still auditioning, doing that, which is great. That's really about, oh, I'm, I'm getting into tech. I love doing tech stuff. So I'm, I'm behind the scenes doing tech stuff for the shows. So if you, um, again, if you go online and you check out my Instagram at Real Lane Napper or my TikTok at Lane Napper, 
you'll see me post this stuff where I'm behind the scenes running the board and all that. But uh, I love it. I just, I live for this. I mean, I really, really enjoy it. Real quick, over the years, you've also won and were nominated for several awards for your work as an actor and choreographer. How does that feel having accomplished something like that? It feels, you know, to be honest with you, um, it just feels, um, let me see. I'm trying my best to think of how to say it. Um, you know, it's it's so cliche when you say it's so nice to be nominated. It really is. I mean, just to be acknowledged. And sometimes I think all of us, sometimes we doubt ourselves or we wonder if we're doing the right thing. I've never doubted myself as in the sense of, am I doing the right thing? Because I love what I do. So it's right for me, you know. So, but to get somebody to notice it and to get an, an award or some kind of recognition is just really, really nice and humbling. And I don't take anything for granted. Like every day, you know, I, I pray, I'm, I'm pretty religious, but every day, well, every night I get on my knees and I thank God for all of the things. And so I'm really humbled by this stuff. So to answer your question, it's really nice to be nominated, but for me, it's just about being recognized that somebody sees you and that they appreciate your work. Um, when the fans say to me, you're the goat of Nickelodeon or, you know, that sort of thing, that to me is like everything. That's the award right there. Yes, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So are there any words that you'd like to say to those watching or listening who have supported your work over the years? Yes. Uh, number one, thank you, thank you, thank you for making me feel seen uh, and just for making me feel like I've done something. I mean, you know, again, I don't like accolades. I don't like that kind of attention. But the fact that you appreciate what I do is just very, very humbling. Uh, so for the fans, thank you guys for sticking with me. Because sometimes, you know, like all of us, we have doubts about ourselves and, you know, body dysmorphia sometimes, or we feel sometimes we're, like we're less than, or, you know, that sort of thing. So I would just say for those who feel bullied or for those who don't feel recognized or seen, keep doing what you do. In my opinion, the ultimate reward is just feeling like you're doing what you want to do and having a good time with it. Of course. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Don't let anyone steal your joy. Keep doing what you love to do. Yes, definitely. Oh, and if people Absolutely. would like to uh, connect with you, where can people find you? Cool. Um, thank you. First of all, I would say Instagram at Real Lane Napper. R E A L, real lane, L A N E, Napper, N A P P E R, real lane, Napper. And if you go on my uh, Instagram, you'll see a lot of fun facts, a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you won't see anywhere else. And then if you go to my TikTok uh, at just lane, Napper, that's a lot of fun. I love to do dances on there. I do a lot of dance stuff on that show, theme songs, I'll, I'll dance. I did something to iCarly. I mean, I'm shocked at how many people see this stuff. Like, it yeah. blows my mind that you guys, you know, that they see this stuff. So also has a big following. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And just yes. actually, two. I think I posted the, uh, the the ones where I hold up the shirt like three hours ago. So I'm, I'm anxious mm -hmm. to see what the numbers are. But um, yeah. But that that's that's how they can connect. But I love connecting. And people who know me know I do write back. If somebody DMs me or whatever. I, if I have the time, I will sit down and answer every single one of those things. Oh, nice. that, that's, that's, that's awesome. amazing. I love that's it. Amazing. And, your, nice. and your TikTok and your Instagram and everything will be in the description down below. So right. we can we can connect with you. So, 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 Jake, how about you take us out with the last question? This yeah. is a, so, 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 Lane, this is basically a question that we ask all our guests at the end of uh, each yes. interview. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. of course, you know, this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think of or how you define your own words or we define the word nostalgia? Okay, when I think of nostalgia, I think of the past, I think of fun, and I think of colors, and I think of laughs. So when I hear nostalgia, those are the first things that I think of when I hear that. That's Definitely. amazing. Great words. Definitely. Which I have to say, 
I actually got all of that with you guys today, honestly. Oh, <laughs> like, that's that's like the laughs, you seeing you guys, the colors. Like I'm looking at uh, Matt's background with the Christmas stuff, and I'm yeah. looking at Chris's background with all those colors in the back. You know, yeah, all, all the plushes and everything. And the laughs, you know, you guys brought me so much joy today. Oh, thank you. Thank, oh, thank you. you so thank you. Well, Lane. On on behalf of you know all of us, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. Yeah, thank yes. you very much. I'm glad we have time to do this, and, and thank you for what you've done, and for uh, being part of, for, for your work, being part of our lives, and keep up what you're doing, and can't wait to see what's next for you. And absolutely. And and yes. I, I was I was serious. I'm gonna be emailing y'all with the exclusives. So uh, we'll, all we'll, right, we'll keep an eye out. For keep, terrific. Keep in touch, Lane. Enjoy the yes. uh, rest yes. of your day. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate yes. you. Yes, awesome. you're welcome. Thank all right. you. You're awesome, Thank too. You. Take care and see you Take soon. Care, Bye. And to all of our viewers and listeners, this brings another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview to a close. We've absolutely enjoyed our time with Lane Knapper. Yes, it's and so awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, we're cranking out these interviews like no tomorrow. You guys don't even know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't even yeah. know. But we got some really, really great uh, interviews coming up. Yes, mm -hmm. and we're and yes. we're getting close to our yes. one hundred one hundred special episode. One hundred episode. It doesn't feel like it. No, it doesn't. It, this, it, this, it, is, it, this is this is this is our ninety first, folks. We're coming up one hundred. We and Chris, Chris said we got a lot of terrific ones coming. Stay tuned. It's gonna be great. Yes, definitely is. So everyone, until next time, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Take care, Take care everyone. everyone. And bye bye. Bye bye. Tell you everyone bye bye. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye bye. <laughs>